yesterday, the Minnesota Vikings, they brought on two new players. They signed two players to join the roster, one of which I found out when I first woke up in the morning. Pacific Standard Time out here on the West Coast. Our day starts a little bit later than the rest of you guys out there. And so when I first wake up, I like to check what's going on in Vikings land because that will help dictate how the podcast is going to go for that particular day. So I woke up, ah, what's going on in Vikings land? I opened up the uh, Bleacher Report at, and first thing I saw was the Minnesota Vikings, they are signing former Vikings wide receiver Laquan Treadwell. And my first initial thoughts on that was, are you kidding me? Really? What are you bringing him back for? Are you serious? Oh, he knows the playbook. Let me tell you something right now. You can know the playbook all you want to. You still have to go out there and execute plays. Laquan Treadwell can't catch worth a damn. Sean Mannion, he knows the playbook. Kyle Sloter is a better quarterback than Sean Mannion. Christian Ponder is one of the smartest football players in the history of the Minnesota Vikings franchise. Guess what? He couldn't play so I first was just saying why are you doing that but here's what I will say in fairness to the Vikings how this could be beneficial to this team especially this signing could really just be right on time to really help this team especially next week against the Chicago Bears we're going to preview that matchup in week four tomorrow so that podcast will be out tomorrow but this signing could be right on time and just what this Vikings team need because of Laquan Treadwell's blocking ability. So on the surface level, this is great because going up against the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field next week, we need all the blockers we can get. We really, really do. So on the surface level, it looks great. Here's where the concern lies, though. If you have Laquan Treadwell out on the field, then that means you are running three wide receiver set formations with one tight end. And that one tight end is going to be Kyle Rudolph. So on one hand, you have Laquan Treadwell, a really good blocker, with Kyle Rudolph, a crappy blocker. Compare that to the 12 formations where you have two tight ends out there. You're going to have Irv Smith Jr., a really good blocker. And again, Kyle Rudolph, a crappy blocker. So unless Gary Kubiak and unless Kevin Stefanski is willing to say, listen, Kyle, When we're running three wide receiver set formations and we know that we're running the football, we are going to have Irv Smith Jr. represent that tight end spot. Unless they're willing to do that, then Treadwell and Irv Smith Jr., they really cancel each other out and it doesn't really benefit the team because you still have a crappy blocker out there next to the offensive line. And against this Chicago Bears team, I don't know if that's the best way to go. Whereas if you have both Irv Smith Jr., and Laquan Treadwell out there on for sure running plays. Oh, that could be that could be a gold mine to bring on extra blockers for this incredible defense that the Chicago Bears have. So I'm interested to see how they maneuver the personnel. If you're going to have Kyle Rudolph out there as the tight end one 100% of the time, then at the end of the day, unless you're giving Irv Smith Jr. just some rest, hey, you need a break, let's throw in Laquan Treadwell. It really just cancels each other out, Treadwell and Irv Smith Jr. But it could help this team, just a matter of how they run the personnel. Next, later on in the day, yesterday, the Vikings also brought on former Vikings punt returner and cornerback Marcus Sherrill. So I don't expect him to play cornerback worth a lick. He has been brought on solely to be our punt returner. And I think there are positions in the sport of football where reliability over or usurps flash so if you are super flashy and there's a chance that you'll end up on sports center's top 10 of the day but you're not good at the basic requirements of that particular position then it's not worth my time if i'm a head coach such as punt return chad bb right he's oh he's fast i love his footwork and all that other stuff but in three games as a punt returner he's fumbled the ball or he's muffed punts twice in three games that's not going to get it done and going back to the Raiders game that muff punt that he had if Chris Boyd wasn't there the Raiders they were either going to fall on it or they were going to pick it up and return it for a touchdown so you can't have that you need reliability and Marcus Sherrill's he brings that so regardless whether he can break it off and run it back for a touchdown when the other team when they're punting the ball rest assured that your offense They're going out there on the field. And against this Chicago Bears team, you cannot risk 
any sort of turnovers whatsoever. Same thing with kickers. You you remember when they got rid, rid of uh, Ryan Longwell? When they got rid of him, I said, come on, what are you doing? Yes, he had a down year, but he's been super reliable. We're going to bring on this SEC kicker out of Georgia, Blair Walsh. He can kick it from 60 yards out. He couldn't play when you needed him most. Oh, my God. Kai Forbath, he's been reliable. He made the most clutch-ass kick in the postseason or of this franchise history in the postseason. Ah, we're going to bring on the sexy kicker, Daniel Carlson. He's got a big-ass leg, and he can kick it from 90 yards out, and it didn't work out. Yes, he is going to turn out to be a good kicker, but I still maintain the fact that, and I even wrote about it uh, on the Viking Age way before the season even started, that this isn't going to work out because this team was in a position to where they are a, or they thought they were a championship contending team. You didn't have time to nurture a young kicker to get comfortable and be confident going to the next level from the college level NCAA to the national football league. You didn't have time for that. So there are certain positions, especially in special teams, punt returner, kick returner, kicker, punter to where you just, are confident in them, they can do their job, and you can focus on everything else. And Marcus Shells, that is a great signing. I love this signing. Couldn't be happier for that. Last thing that I'm going to talk about is something interesting came up in the comments section of the recap of the Raiders versus the Vikings. The Vikings win over the Oakland Raiders on Sunday. Someone brought up, I don't remember the name or channel that this person has, but they said, and it was in response to, hey, the Vikings offensive line, I think they're average in pass protection and run blocking. They're really, really good. This one guy said, oh, my God, they're terrible. Do your research. They are the second worst pass protecting offensive line in the league. They give up X amount of pressure per snap is second worst in the entire NFL. First of all, I'm an eye test guy. OK, so advanced analytics. I like advanced analytics to a degree, but to really use it as further supporting what it is that I see. Second of all, I do this podcast. And if I'm doing this podcast and every other sentence out of my mouth goes something along the lines of this player or this team is the they're really good or they're really bad because pro football focus has them ranked as the 16th best in the league. Then all I'm doing, I'm not running a show. I'm just simply being a messenger for pro football focus. I'm just simply regurgitating their analysis and what they saw on their film review. I'm an eye test guy, but even still, I don't think advanced in analytics are the end all be all. So let's go ahead and entertain this idea that the Minnesota Vikings are the second worst pass protecting offensive line in the league. Let's just go ahead and entertain that for a second. They're worse than Cleveland. They're worse than Tennessee. They're worse than Arizona. They're worse than Houston, even with Laramie Tunsil. They're worse than Miami. Folks, listen, I hope we realize that in the National Football League in this era, this point in time right now for the last couple of years, there's only out of 32 teams, there's only a handful of quality offensive lines in the league to where the rest of the 27 or 26 teams in the NFL, the rest of them, hey, figure it out, do the best you can. And the Vikings offensive line, I think that they've been average. I think they have, really. And you can make the argument that Josh Klein and Brian O'Neill, they are one of the best right side offensive lines in the entire NFL. Garrett Bradbury, does he need to get better? Sure, he needs to get better. I think he's been okay. Pat Elfline, I think he's been okay. Riley Reef, he's okay. My God, this whole idea, oh my God, they are the second worst offensive line in the league. They are just absolutely terrible. Come on, you can't really believe that, really? No, they're not. They're not the second worst in the league. They are better than, I would say, at least, at least 10 other offensive lines in the league. At least 10. And then I can make the argument for another four or five or six after that. Come on, man. They are fine. And they held their own. I thought considering going up in week two against the Packers edge rush, the pass rush that they have, because we know now for sure that the Packers, they have a legit defense along with a legit pass rush out there. And the Vikings, they held their own. Yes, they gave up pressure, but they had plenty of clean blocks and plenty of clean uh, pockets for Kirk Cousins to make plays out there. We need to stop. We need to give this offensive line a break. They've been just fine. We do this three times a week. 
mediocre best sports podcast with realistic randy check me out on twitter at realistic underscore randy facebook at realistic randy tomorrow we are going to preview the vikings at chicago bears we're going to preview that game that's coming up on sunday that preview that podcast is going to be out tomorrow the audio podcast you can check out the link to that if you're unable to watch this on youtube you can subscribe on itunes or soundcloud the link to the audio podcast will be in the description of this video we'll see you tomorrow